He has these fish are racing up the water column there. My jig's right there, somewhere in the middle. There's just so many fish down there, it's hard to see the jig. As we roll into summer, I've been getting a number of questions regarding 2D sonar. It seems like this type of sonar is by far the most affordable. So today's video, we're going to go in depth of what 2D sonar is showing you, the settings I use for 2D sonar, and how to use 2D sonar to find fish and put them in the boat. First, let's start with what 2D sonar is showing us. 2D sonar transmits a cone directly below the transducer, which could be on the back of the boat or mounted on the trolling motor. It really doesn't matter where you have it mounted, just understand where you have it mounted in relation to what it's going to be showing on the screen coming up further in this video. Speaking of putting fish in the boat, what happens when you catch a really big fish and you find out your camera battery or your phone battery is low? In my case, I always keep a wireless power bank. That's why this video is sponsored by The Ridge. Now, like I said, this is a wireless power bank. You can set your phone or any other wireless charging device right on top of it. It will start charging it, no cables necessary. It's also got three different USB ports. It's got a regular USB, a USB-C, and a lightning port charger for any phone or camera device that's compatible with those plugins. For me, I also use it to charge up and power my GoPros. It gives me about two hours of runtime when I'm filming on the water. Plenty of time for you to catch a really nice fish, get some great footage, and also be sure your phone or camera still has enough battery juice to take that nice picture. Be sure to go to ridge.com forward slash Davis and use promo code Davis, that is D-A-V-I-S, all caps, and you're gonna get 15% off this charger. Huge thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to finding fish with 2D sonar. This signal gets sent from the transducer to the lake bottom and returns back to the transducer. If there's anything between the transducer and the lake bottom, that's gonna show up as a fish, weeds, brush, whatever. That's because that signal gets sent from the transducer, it hits the fish, it hits the weeds, it hits the brush pile, and it gets returned instead of going all the way down to the lake bottom. Now the size of the cone is determined by the frequency. On a lot of older 2D sonar units, there were typically two frequencies, 200 kilohertz and 83 kilohertz. The 200 kilohertz frequency was a smaller cone showing roughly one third of the width of the bottom. That means let's say we're in 21 feet of water it's showing seven feet in diameter on the lake bottom. On contrast, the 83 kilohertz frequency was a much wider cone angle, showing a one-to-one -one ratio. So in the same 21 feet of water, we were actually seeing 21 feet in diameter of the lake bottom. Newer 2D sonar units use something called CHIRP, which sends out multiple frequencies at the same time, giving you a very clear, crisp image. Many of these modern 2D sonar units will actually show the distance of the cone angle as you can see here on the Garmin unit. You can slide up changing frequencies or changing the cone angle and it will automatically calculate it for you what the bottom of the cone angle is showing you. Now keep in mind that the cone angle at the very, very top towards the transducer is much narrower than the lake bottom. So if we go back to our example of using 200 kilohertz in 21 feet of water, that's showing us seven feet across on the lake bottom. But if we go up just three feet to 18 feet down in the same 20 feet, 21 feet of water, it's only showing us six feet across in diameter. So understand as you get closer towards the transducer, the cone angle is narrower and it's not gonna show as much data versus near the lake bottom, it's gonna show a wider cone angle. It's gonna be much wider and show more data. So now that we've covered how 2D sonar works, let's talk about reading the screen. Most modern day electronics use multiple color palettes rather than the old grayscale style. The color allows you to interpret the size and density of the object or the actual lake bottom itself, whether the lake bottom is made of sand, gravel, muck, mud. This color scale that you're seeing here uses a dark red as a hard return, meaning a hard lake bottom, brush, rocks, even big fish will appear as red. Now the blues and the greens are actually showing the weakest return. Typically smaller schools of bait fish will show up as blues or green. But if you go into the color palette selection on the Garmin unit or Humminbird or Lowrance, whatever you're using, there's a variety of different palettes that you can use. The typical Humminbird palette, as you can see here, is more of a yellow return, meaning the yellow is actually the hardest image that you're looking at. So the bigger fish are gonna show up as yellow. 
it depends on what you're comfortable seeing. Pick a palette scale that you're comfortable with. Get used to understanding what a rock pile or sand looks like versus mud, muck, or silt, and what big fish versus little fish look like based on that color palette. Time on the water is the only way you're gonna get comfortable with this. Now let's talk about what you're actually seeing on the screen and how the screen relates to the transducer. On the top right part of the screen, the very top right corner, that is where your transducer would be located in relation to your boat. So anything directly under the top right corner of the screen is directly under the transducer. So let's say you have the transducer mounted at the transom. Anything showing directly under the top right corner of that screen is directly under the transom of your boat. As the image moves left across the screen, those images are now further behind your transducer. This is historical data. Now there's something you can add to the screen that helps you show more of a real-time image and that's something called the amplitude meter or on Garmin's units it's called the A-scope. This shows directly underneath the transducer in more of a real-time fashion. Now later in the video we're going to be using this A-scope function to be able to actually see our jigging pattern and see the crappie actually rise up and hit our jigs directly underneath the boat. Want a vertical jig and want to be able to see your jigs be sure to turn the A-scope function on. Now let's talk about what we're actually seeing on the screen in relation to fish, specifically the arches. This gets into the next thing of setting, either making sure you're not too deep and you're not trying to see too much on your screen. If you go to your range, then you can manually set your depth. Now typically I would go at 30 feet, um, but because I'm only in about 20 feet of water I'm just gonna leave it on auto because I know it's gonna show me more of that screen than less and let me explain why that's important the main reason you want to uh, shrink your screen is because of the pixels that it's going to designate to a square uh, inch or area of water let me explain something let's say this is your uh, this is your crappie for whatever reason shaped like this when the transducer sends a signal down, it's going to hit part of that fish. And the slower you go over it, the more it's going to ping off this fish, which is why you see all these elongated lines, as I'm not really moving that fast. If you were to go two miles an hour, it might only hit this fish three or four times. That's why you see these sharp arcs, because normally a fish is more shaped like this. So it's going to ping off the tail of it, the middle, and the head, and it's gonna give you this arc shape. So if you're fishing for crappie like we are today, you're going to wanna to shrink that screen or actually zoom in. So you're gonna set your auto depth from zero to 30. Now I have it set on auto because it's only 20 feet deep, so the fish are gonna show up just fine. But for those of you guys that fish in a little bit deeper water, 40, 50 feet, set your depth to 30 for two reasons. One, you're gonna be able to see the fish better. It's gonna give more pixels to smaller fish. You're gonna see the bait fish, you're gonna see the crappie really well. And two, it's not really ethical to fish for crappie deeper than 30 feet. Um, if, you, if you catch them that deep, odds are pretty good. The mortality rate is really high. So now that we got an understanding of what 2D sonar is, what it's showing us, and in relation to the screen, what is directly under the boat or under the transducer and what is historical data, let's try to catch some fish with this jig set up and be able to actually see them on the A-scope hit the jigs. Those, those fish rising up like that, those fish are just running up at my jig. That's all they're doing. There's it. Oh, there he was. There he is. See that line going straight up? It's hard to see, but that's that fish run. As I set the hook, he's not that big of a fish. That's why the line wasn't that big. But hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what these crappie look like on 2D sonar when you're sitting right over the top. A lot of people get confused when they're sitting right over the top of fish and they look like straight lines and they think, you know, your sonar's broken. This kind of looks the same way with down imaging, which I'm going to do a different video on. Dark red is that hard image or that hard return. Your brush pile and these, uh, blues and these greens those are those crappie 
So there you have it. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding how 2D sonar works. Huge thank you for the Ridge for sponsoring this video. Once again, be sure to go to ridge.com forward slash Davis. Use promo code Davis, D-A-V-I-S, all capital letters, get you 15% off this cool power bank charger that I use every single time I'm out in the water. Appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water this season. Have fun and catch a ton of fish.